Now, I'm going to be tying uh, the original double decker. This is uh, the double decker here. Now, it's basically, uh, originally it was a dry fly tied for the river, uh, but it's actually become one of the best, uh, or top dry flies on one of the uh, best known waters in Scotland called Lake and Teeth. Uh, plus, I mean, it fishes everywhere. I mean, I do quite a few variants of it. This is the one that I, I, I tie quite a lot of, and it's caught a lot of times in the lake as well. Uh, as island because uh, of this. this. The difference is only the thread the thread colour. The original was a tan thread which I've got here. The tan colour is this was used uh, in the fly whether it be that thread it could have been the UTC thread. Uh, on, the, on this, on the other one uh, I've used the, this one here. This is a rusty, rusty brown. Now, it's up to say you can use a brown, the dark brown is this another good colour. And even all of dark olive and so on works. So you can mess about with this pattern. But the, I put some photographs up of the one with this, this one here, uh, recently. And I've been, I don't know many messages I got about this fly. Uh, basically as well, could you, what is the original dressing now? As I say, the original thread may have been the UTC or the Danville's uh, tan. It's, it's basically I've only got the uni thread. Uh, so... It's up to yourself what one you like. Now, first thing I'm going to do is wax the thread. Get it started. You've got, it's very important that you wax the thread. You need all the grip you can get. Now, another thing, I'm using an 8 thread. You may want to use a, a, a heavier thread, maybe a 6 or uh, a stronger thread. It's up to yourself. But I'm used to this thread. But anyway, we'll get it tied. Now, the hook I'm using, the very popular hook, whether it be the Kamasan hook, which is a... Uh, the B160 or the fully mill, uh, the short shank special, which is the same. Uh, this is this is the short shank special. Now basically, what it is is the gapes equivalent to a size 10. Uh, the shanks equivalent to a size uh, 12. So basically, it's classed as a 10, but it's because of the wide gap it fishes really well. It's a great hook. It's a good and it's a medium wire hook. It's really good for dries, uh, and it's got extra strength, especially for the bigger fish. Now as I say, wax the thread. Now the first thing I do is put the thread, or wind the thread halfway down the shank and remove the waist. Then I come halfway back up. Now that gives me the position for the wing. Now the wing is I'm using a row deer. The deer here, this here. Now you don't be shy with it. Put plenty on for the wing, because you're doubling the wing. Hence it's named the double decker. So make sure you've got enough there. You cut it away from the skin. Now I'm going to stack it, but before I do that, it's important that you take away all this fluff, this rubbish here, and the under fur. Go out and do that, because it will not stack unless you do that. It will tangle up. Now you can run it through a comb, which I'm doing. Just run it through a comb uh, as well. Once you're happy with that, then you can put it into the stacker. Tips first, into the stacker, and then you can... Tap it in your hand, or tap it in the desk, whatever way you want, but will stack and you can see it lines up quite easy once you take away all the rubbish. So anyway, there we are. Just remove it from the stacker. There's a couple of broken ends there as well, I'm just going to take them away. We tie this forward to the eye, so we're looking at a length at least, at least the shank length. I don't usually go much more than the hook length, so anywhere between now it's fine for the wing. Now I'm just going to make sure this does wax on my thread. Get your measurement, and there it's there. Now you come round with two loose turns and then a tighten up. One, two, three, four, add more turns. Make sure you draw the wing forward, but don't let go of the waist ends. Now as you wind out, when you catch it in your wing, obviously at this point, now take it turns, wind, slightly down, keep the thread nice and tight, looking in there, and then take your thread back up to the wing, making sure that's secure, and come back down. Now I'm going to break this away, just take my time, it will break eventually, just keep winding, you've got to be patient with it. You see it's starting to break. Once it starts to go, it will break. It's just being stubborn. Uh, 
But anyway, we'll just keep going. Now you mend it, as you see, it's came away. And you see how much pressure I put on there. Now this is only 8 oh thread, so I can get a lot of pressure in there. It's just knowing where to put the pressure. Now obviously there's one or two I've missed, so you just pinch them off. It's quite easy to do. See what it's looking like. Now what I do then is I basically tied up these ends. And then I come back up. Just wind right up to the wing. And then go and lift the wing up. Just tease it towards the back. And then bring a thread to the front. Three or four turns, not on the wing, but just to build up some of the thread turns. Now what I like to do here is basically put a turn round the base of the wing. So I come round from the back, lift the wing up, basically on top of the shank, come underneath, but right underneath, and then come back to the back. Now that basically lifts up the wing, just lifts it up like that. Now you don't, this doesn't have to be a super tight turn, it's just enough just to basically lift the wing and make it tidy, that's what I'm doing. Now I'm going to spread this fibre when I come back up, when it all sit like a fan when I'm finished with it. So basically we're at the back of the hook now for the tail. We've got here the Croc de Leon fibre, this is a white and Croc de Leon. Now this is a medium pardo, now I've just bring out some of the fibres. 90 degrees from the stem, we'll take that away. Uh, once it's lined up, tail length, not too long, round about the, let's say the hook length or so. Just tie this in, just put the tail in your fingers. Catch on the top, and keep it on the top, wind down the shank. Just to basically, just slightly, just as it starts to ground the bend, and then take a thread turn underneath. And then pull towards the front of the hook. Just spreading the fibre, encouraging that, and then do a turn on top. And you see it slightly fans out the wing, uh, sorry, out the tail. Then we can take away the waist. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to double up the thread as a rib. Meaning, what I'm going to do is take the thread up to basically this point, and use my finger, put, let the, pull out off a length, maybe I may, say, what's it, four inches or so, less than that. And then put your finger on it and double up the thread by just coming up on the top and tying over it, just like you would do if you were forming like a dubbing loop. And wind, wind this towards the back of the hook. We're going to use this as a thread, as a rib. And doubling it up will help see it. So then I'm going to wax it. You can see I have quite a dark piece of wax. It's just, as a clear or light coloured wax, it's just get dirty over time. And it, it will slightly darken it. Not a lot, but it will do it. It just gives it more grip. And then we're going to get our dubbing. Now the dubbing is an actual seals, uh, seals fur. This one here. Uh, just You could use quite a few fibres. Just lightly dub it on. It's a great colour for a lot of flies. It's one of my favourite colours for uh, using the river. Uh, for a part that I like called the lack and grey so but anyway so what we do is we, we draw the the dubbing up to the the body so I get a turn there where it's I can see it's caught and then I can tighten to that so then we can work our way up we can stretch the dubbing out if we need just to form a taper and we're going to take this all the way up all the way to the wing Stretch it out when you need to. Just so slide down the excess, take away, when you keep that on the thread, just slide it down out the way. And then lift the wing, uh, make sure all the fibres to the front, and just do a couple of turns just in front. Now, as I say, I have waxed the thread. The, the tan coloured thread you'll not see just as well as you would the rusty brown. It is there, you can't, I can see it okay, but it just ribs well, it's there, it is the original dressing, so we come up maybe five turns or so, and then we do a turn in front of the wing, and then we catch it in with the thread, nice and tight, and then trim away. Then what we're going to do, 
when we get to this point, after tying off our rib, we're going to separate the wing. We're going to double up the wing, hence the name double decker. So we're going to form basically two two wings or separate the wing evenly. So we're going to put as much at the back as well over the front. So we slide our dubbing up what's left on with thread. Just tighten it, just hold the back wing. And then we wind at least three turns, tightening up when we need to. Just check. That looks fine to me. Just put a turn of rib through it. Lift the wing. Now I'm going to stretch it out slightly towards the eye. And then what dubbing's left, I'm going to work up towards the wing. Stop at that point and then add on. I need to add on a wee bit more. Just to finish it off. Slide it up. And hold the wing back. Now I'm not actually tying on the wing, I'm just using the dubbing to hold it back. So we carry one up, again stretching it out when we need to, and then work our way back through with some of the dubbing that's left on the thread. I'm just going to take away the excess, it's just a touch too much. At this point, we stroke back anything that's going forward with my fingers, give a thread. Onto the eye, make sure there's a really good head. Now I'm going, to I'm going to varnish the thread, just run the varnish through it. I'm going to do a couple of turns, then put finish. And there we are. Now we obviously we're drawing the wing back, we've messed about with it. When we start to fish the fly, it'll lift. It'll just sit nice. Now what we can do here is we can take away any extra long fibre. We can just, I don't quite like the way it's worked out. You could trim it flat if you want but I think that's ideal. It's got a nice rib, nice, tail's fine. So we a couple of fibres back here I want to take away. Uh, it looks not too bad. Uh, it's, a, it's a fine fly as you say, but it's, once you start to use it, it'll start to fish better. You get a better shape in the fly. And here we are. Now that's as close to the original dressing, uh, as far as I believe anyway, with the colour, uh, I mean with the thread especially. The, the deer hair you use, it can be slightly heavier, it can be quite more bushy. This is quite a, it's a this piece here is from... Uh, a road here, as I say, is from the ridge that runs along the back of the, the deer here. It's quite a coarse and coloured here. You could use much lighter, um, you know, a lighter colour. As you can see it's a wee bit lighter, you could use that. It's got more grey. There's, there's, you can, depends on the deer here you're using as well, like what you want to do. But anyway, there we are. As I say, I, I was getting asked and asked, could I tie the original, could I do the original? Uh, so there we are. I hope that, hope that helps. <laughs> as I say, it's this this colour here works uh, really well as much as that, and this will work. Uh, as I say, you can change the colour of thread. It could be olives, it could be browns, it could be this. It's a rusty brown. You can manage the colour rub just by or the fly just by changing the, the thread that you're using. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, again. Now if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, uh, it does help, and it doesn't cost you anything, it's, it is free, it just means that uh, one, that you enjoy the videos that you, because you've subscribed, uh, and uh, the other thing, uh, it basically helps the channel, it shows people are interested, so again, thanks for watching, uh, until next time.